a very good evening uh, to you all uh, dear brothers and sisters uh, in christ uh, we thank our lord for giving this wonderful opportunity to spend some time to discuss his wonderful words of life uh, so today uh, we will be studying uh, uh, you see a special thing that is mentioned to us in book of uh, genesis a very simple uh, point but uh, the entire plan of god is uh, in that verse so that is given to us in genesis second chapter about a river that went out of uh, eden uh, kindly read genesis 2 10 for a river went out of eden to water the garden and from thence it was parted and become into four heads good so a river came out of uh, eden you see and it parted into four heads it seems uh, so each and every river you see uh so moved into a particular direction so let us read uh, uh, genesis second chapter 11 and 12 the name of the first is pishon that is it which compasses the whole land of avila where there is gold and the gold of that land is good there is bdelium and the onyx stone very good uh, see the first name of the river is uh, pishon it goes to land of avila where there is full of gold it seems and that gold is very precious it seems okay Now, which is the second river genesis 2 13 mm. and the name of the second river is gihon the name the same is it that compasses the whole land of ethiopia very good the second river is gihon it is the same that compasses the whole land of ethiopia You see and covers the entire land of Ethiopia. Okay, which is the third river? Read Genesis two fourteen. And the name of the third river is Hidekel. That is it, which goes towards the east of Assyria. Very good. So the third river is Hidekel. It went to the land of Assyria. Okay. Now which is the fourth river? Same. Continue with the verse fourteen. And the fourth uh, river is Euphrates. Very good. The fourth river is river Euphrates. Now a very simple thing uh, is mentioned here. A four rivers that came out of Eden. You see, after it came out of uh, Eden, it parted into four heads. Each and uh, every uh, river went into a different and a particular, uh, uh, you see, place. so what is this actually four uh, rivers uh, that went out of eden represent what does it mean just uh, imagine you then uh, why would god give such a small intricate detail about uh, four rivers coming out of eden you see why was it necessary you see that four rivers went out of eden and went to particular places and so many things were there why that is uh, mentioned for us uh, so what is the meaning of this one we have seen how to study the bible you see ha huh? here a little there a little search from the scriptures if you have any doubts or any questions from the bible we need to search the answers only from the bible itself okay so what does the water mean in the bible see bible la in the bible you see the bible says that water or river in the bible means people uh, let us read revelation 17:15 uh, sahij brother is it possible for you to read brother revelation 17:15 sahij brother is okay okay ashish brother can you read and he said unto me the water which thou sawest where the whole where the whole city are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues very good so here it clearly says the waters upon which the whole city is people multitudes nations and tongues people so water we see rivers we see in the bible represents people that means water you see when came out of eden but then it parted into become in four different parts so what does this represents you see this represents the brethren 
the one person our father adam who came out of garden of eden after him coming out of garden of eden what happened you see adam reproduced his generation the entire human kind were formed out of adam we are all formed you see and formed out of uh, one blood one uh, you see blood that is blood of adam you see acts uh, of the apostles clearly says so adam and eve were the one who came out of eden and through them the entire population of this world world has been generated therefore you see uh, we can uh, read acts uh, 1726 acts 1726 for And hath made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on all the face of the earth, and hath determined the times we were appointed and the bounds of their habitants. You see? Habitation. Thank you, brother. So we are all made out of one blood. So entire mankind, each and every human being are come out of that one man, one blood, one pair. You see, one river that came out of Eden, then it parted into, you see, four parts. You see? Therefore, uh, once when Adam was cast out of Garden of Eden, what did God say? Go into the cursed ground. Uh, cursed is the ground for thy sake. Uh, you see, dear brethren, therefore, once they came out of uh, Garden of Eden, you see, the entire mankind of population were uh, through that one pair, Adam and Eve. Therefore, dear brethren, so what are these four, uh, uh, you see, uh, reverse represents. Uh, we all know very well. You see, dear brethren, the four you see groups of people who have been developed in the gospel age and in the Jewish age and in the millennial age by God's grace. Uh, that is what this uh, four uh, you see, huh? Group uh, represents. Uh, we all know the divine plan of the ages very clearly. You see, God has made a plan for the whole mankind. In that one, two salvations are there. Heavenly and earthly salvation. And in the heavenly salvation, there are two parts. And also in the earthly salvation, there are two parts. You see, now remember the two parts. You see, those who go to the heavenly salvation. You see? Now, first uh, people is one lakh forty four thousand. If you remain faithful to God until our death, you see, we will go to the little flock. But uh, those who run the race are not able to attain the crown, fall short of God's grace, uh, then they fall into the great multitude class. So, these are the two classes of people who attain the heavenly salvation. But on the earthly salvation, you see, there is earthly salvation also. On the earthly salvation, there are two groups. One is the ancient worthies, all the faithful warriors from uh, Abel to John the Baptist. You see, they will be resurrected and the rest of the mankind, uh, apart from them, is uh, the world of mankind. There is salvation for them also. Therefore, dear brethren, remember uh, what uh, God had promised to Abraham. You see, what did God say to Abraham? Huh? I have sworn upon myself uh, that in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. I uh, will make their seed as the stars of the sky and sand of the seashore. Therefore, dear brethren, you see, this, uh, you see, uh, promise which God made to Abraham, there itself uh, is clearly shows there are two types of salvation, heavenly and earthly. The entire mankind, you see, are populated through that one man, Adam. But through Jesus, there is this two salvations, heavenly and earthly salvation. So let us read 1 Timothy 4.10. 1 Timothy 4.10, brother. Imani Peter can you read? Oh, good. Emmanuel, brother, good evening. Can you read? Good evening, brother. Okay, first Timothy 14. Yeah. For we both labor and suffer reproach because we trust in the living God 
who is the savior of all men, especially of those that believe. Very good, brother. He is the savior of all men, but specially, that means specially of those that believe means those that believe are specially saved. A special salvation is given for them. Read one more verse, First John 2, 2, brother. First John 2, 2. John 2.2 ah. And he is the propitiation for our sins and not for ours only but also for the sins of the whole world. Very good. Jesus is a propitiation for not only our sins, not only the sins of the Christians but the entire world. Therefore, there is a plan of God to save the whole mankind by these two salvation. Heavenly salvation Earthly salvation. Two groups in the heavenly salvation. The little flock and the great multitude. Two groups uh, in the earthly salvation. The ancient worthies and the world. So these are the four groups of people who will be saved. And this is what is shown in the river that came out of Garden of Eden. Now how, how does it uh, uh, suit? Uh, how does it, uh, you see, signify this one? Let us read it. The first river, name is called as Pishon. It went in the land of Avila, where there is gold, and that gold is very excellent, good gold. Now, what does this represent? You see, dear brethren, you see, this first river, Avila, represents, you see, the people who go to the gold class. You see, gold. What does the gold mean in the Bible? Remember the tabernacle class? The things that are made in the holy and the most holy were made of gold. But things in the court were made up of uh, copper or uh, see, brass. What does these two metals represent in the tabernacle? It represents uh, perfect human nature and perfect, uh, you see, divine nature. Gold always represents the nature which God himself is having. While copper and brass are much similar to gold. But they are not gold. It's like imitation gold you can say. So this represents the human nature. Man was created in the image of God. So man is not God. But he was created in the image of God. Likeness of God. As copper is similar to gold. Similarly mankind is in the image of God. Therefore you see. Huh? Gold always uh, in the Bible represents the perfect divine nature. You see, the perfect nature which God Himself is having. So, who is this class of people who are going to attain the immortal nature to be with Jesus? You see, in the immortal divine nature, it is the like and 44,000. Among this one, you see, it is the like and 44,000. Who go and attain the gold class, uh, golden character of Christ likeness? Uh, you see, so this represents the little flock. Okay, now from when this uh, little flock selection is uh, happening? You see, is it only after death of Christ? Till then, uh, God did not love the world. You see, what happened to the people who were uh, dead before Jesus? Uh, Dear brethren, the heavenly salvation was started to proclaim only by Jesus Christ. So as Jesus proclaimed, you see, then only what happened? You see, many brethren came to the truth and consecrated their life. So these are part of the little flock. You see, therefore, you see, we see clearly, what about the people who are dead? Did they go to heaven? No. They never have gone to heaven. Because Jesus clearly said in John 3.13, no man hath ascended to heaven. You see, no man has ascended to heaven. Nobody has gone to heaven. Not of the ancient virgins. None, none of the people have gone to heaven. They are all in the grave. You see, David also is in the grave. David's grave is with the people of Israel. That's what Apostle Paul clearly says. You see, so, dear brethren, you see, they will be resurrected. When? You see, when, you see, Jesus said, marvel not that this, for hour is coming, all that are in the grave shall hear his voice. John 5, 28. All the people who are dead, who are gone, will hear his voice and come forth. 
you see so there will be resurrection a heavenly resurrection and the earthly resurrection so those who have attained this 144000 we have studied that one elaborately in the class of the church you see so they have to be like christ if they are to attend the class uh, read romans 8:29 romans 8 chapter 29 verse Ashish brother or Emmanuel brother? Imaj, you can read. Romans said 29. Ah. For whom he did for, for no, he also did predestine it to be confirmed to be confirmed to the image of his son that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. See, whom did he for no? Him, he also did predestinate to be confirmed to the image of his son. Zerax copies of Jesus. That is what we are called for. Imagine to be Zerax copy of Jesus. Is it uh, so easy? No. Hence, uh, our character purification is compared to that of gold. You see, our character is compared to gold. Gold purification, dear brethren. Bible says, no, First Peter 1.7. Uh, your trial of faith is much more precious than gold. Gold is heated at a temperature of 2500 degree. And then it has been poured. If we heat at that temperature only, you see, all the impurities from gold will come off. It seems similarly, we will be tested in a very, very high pressure, dear brethren. So this represents the first class of people who attain the divine nature, who remain faithful to God until death. Okay. Now let us come to the second river. What is the name of the second river? The name of the second river is called as Gihon. You see? And where does it go? It goes to the land of Ethiopia. Now, what does this represent? Who are these people who go to Ethiopia? Ethiopia means what? Uh, today is Kush. You see? And uh, what does the Bible say about Ethiopia or Kush? Where is it? You see, the Ethiopia or Kush is actually the land of Africa. No, what does Africa represent? You see, Africa represents, uh, you see, the servant class of people. You see, they they compared to the other, uh, you see, class of uh, people on the whole world, they seem to be a very cursed uh, class of people. Okay? Therefore, now, among the heavenly salvations, the lack and 44,000 attained a divine nature. But what about the other people? You see, what about the other people who consecrate but were not able to attain the first prize? Uh, where do we go? You see, they lose the prize, but uh, they will be saved. That means God cannot give them the nature of divine nature because they are not proved faithfulness to God until the death. But uh, some opportunity, some blessings can be given. That is the privilege to be of the great multitude. You see, therefore, in uh, heavenly salvations, there are two parts now. Little flock and great multitude. This represents the great multitude class of people who serve as servants before the throne. Revelation 7 chapter. Bible clearly says now, who are these who are having the palm branches in their hand standing before the throne? This is the great multitude. Read Revelation 7 9. Imagine the brother, please read Revelation 7 9. Revelation 7 9. Hmm. After this, I beheld and I lo, a great multitude which no man could number of all nations and kindreds and the people and the tongues stood before the throne and before the Lamb clothed with white robes and palms in their hand. Very good, brother. So there was a great multitude which no man can number from all nations and tongues. They stood before the throne. You see? Having palm branches in their hands. Now, why stand before the throne? Because they are not proved faithfulness. God cannot give them the opportunity to sit along with them on the throne. Hence, they are standing before the throne. As servant class of people. You see, dear brethren, 
So these uh, are the great multitude who lose the opportunity to become of the bright class. Instead of becoming the bright class, they could become the concubines. Remember Psalms 45 chapter we read now? You see, the queen should be brought to king. A complete needlework, but our virgins are companion follow her. These are the foolish virgins. Remember the class, wise virgins, foolish virgins we studied now? Wise virgins has the oil in the lamp as well as in the vessel. So hence, uh, you see, uh, the wise who had oil in the vessel, they were saved. Uh, brought up the foolish. Uh, though they are virgins, uh, they can never be part of the bride uh, of Christ. Uh, hence, they lose the opportunity. This is what the great multitude of people do. And uh, what does the Bible say? You see, wearing white robes. What did they do with the white robes? Read Revelation 7, 14, brother. In 14, mm. and I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, These are these are they which came out of the great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Very good. Uh, these have come out of great tribulation and washed it with the blood of Lamb. Why great tribulation? You see, because they did not maintain the rope of righteousness uh, in a pure condition. It got spotted as they mingled in the world. Uh, but they have then, you see, we all uh, have to live in the world. Whenever we sin in our thought, uh, deeds and words, a spot comes on our clothes. We need to cleanse it immediately on the spot. But if we don't do it, what will happen? The spot remains like that. So, it can't be washed. They have to put it into great tribulation. Once they had put it into great tribulation, lot of problem troubles in their life. Then only they will start appreciating Jesus. And cleanse and start cleaning themselves, but it will be too late. Uh, it will be like Lord's wife. You see, the angels had to pull them out from Sodom and Gomorrah. Even after pulling, she turned back, having sympathy with the wicked, a sinful condition. Therefore, these great multitudes are not overcomers, but they will be in the heavenly salvation like angels, but not uh, rule with Christ for a thousand years. Okay, now third river. The third river is what? Hidekel, it went to the land of Assyria. What does uh, Hidekel, Assyria mean? You see, eh? Hidekel means today's Tigris River. Where is it? It says it is in Assyria. Okay. Now, Tigris River, where is it? If you see, you see, Tigris River, today it is really there. It's in Assyria. Assyria means what? Mesopotamia. Uh -huh. Now who came out of Mesopotamia? You see, let us read uh, Acts of the Apostles 7 chapter verse 2. Acts 7 2 brother. Uh, brother, Please read, brother. Acts 7 2, brother. Acts 7 2. Yeah. And he said, Men, brethren, and the fathers, hearken, the God of glory appeared unto our father Abraham when he was in Mesopotamia before the dwelt in Karan. Ah, God appeared to Abraham. Where? In Mesopotamia. That is the place first civilization started. We would have studied in the school. You see, the Indus Valley civilization. You see, Mesopotamia means what? Uh, the land between two rivers. Mesopotamia. You see, Meso. Uh, Potamia. Potamia means something related to water. Meso means what? Two. The land between two rivers. Between uh, Euphrates and Tigris. The land. It was there that it dwelt. Hence, uh, this river represents uh, the ancient worthies. Uh, See, we have studied lack in 44,000. Great multitude. Now, coming to the earthly salvation, there are two parts. One is the ancient worthies, another is the world. So, this part represents the ancient worthies. You see, who were faithful to God, you see, before Jesus came to this earth. You see, we know the ancient worthies. 
You see, from Abel to John the Baptist, all the people are the faithful ancient worthies. Let us read Matthew 11, 11. Matthew 11, 11, brother. Matthew 11, 11. Oh. Verily I say unto you, among them that are born of woman, there hath no not reason a greater than the John Baptist. Notwithstanding, he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Very good, brother. You see, verily, verily, I say unto you, them that are born of women, all the people are born of women, there's none greater than John the Baptist. John the Baptist is the greatest of all, but it says, though he may be greatest, he is still uh, you see, not greater than the person who goes to the heavenly salvation. Notwithstanding, he that is least in the heavenly salvation, the kingdom of heaven, is greater than John the Baptist. That means John the Baptist may be how much ever greater, he is still on the earthly salvation. Hence, uh, these uh, ancient worthies, uh, from Abel to John the Baptist, the list is given in Hebrews 11 chapter. All the people who are faithful to God are. You see, where did they go? What is the reward that the God had promised you? How, how much reward did they get? What does the Bible say? Let us read Hebrews 11 chapter 39 and 40. Hebrews 11 chapter 39 and 40, brother. Hebrews chapter 11, 39 and 40. Hmm. And these all having obtained a good report through faith, receive not the promise, God having provided some better thing for us, mm -hmm. they allowed us should not be made perfect. Uh -huh. You see, of all these one, all the people who mentioned in Hebrews 7 chapter obtained a good report through faith, but did not receive the promise. They did not get the promise. What God had promised reward did not get it. When will they get it? You see, the verse says God has provided something better for us that is the church and they without us that is the church should not be perfect without church getting the reward they would never get the reward now what is the reward that is good they're going to get will they be taken to heaven no they will be getting a reward of the better resurrection read same chapter verse 35 brother hebrews 11 35 brother Women received their dead, raised to life again, and others were tor tortured, not accepting deliverance, they might obtain a better resurrection. They might attain a better resurrection. Better resurrection is what? Something better than the order resurrection. Order resurrection, as the people died, they will come back. A better resurrection is what? They won't come in the same way they died. They will come in a better way. That means uh, the ancient verses will come at the perfect man's age of 30 years as a resurrected because already they have proven their faithfulness. Now, what is the work they are going to do in Christ's kingdom? These are going to be visible rulers in Christ's kingdom. And so Jesus said, no, look, chapter 12, you see, uh, you shall see Isaac, uh, Abraham, Isaac and Jacob from uh, uh, all over the parts of the world. People will come and sit with them. You see, but uh, you yourself shall be cast out. Jesus tells them to this, uh, uh, you see, Pharisees and Sadducees, read, uh, look, read, look, uh, one minute. Okay, Luke 13 chapter 28 and 29, brother. Luke 13 chapter 28 and 29. Luke chapter 13, 28 and 29. Yeah. There shall be a weeping and gnashing of teeth when ye shall see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God and you yourself thrust out. Mm. And they shall come. 
Continue, continue. Hmm. And they shall come from the east and from the west and from the north and the, from the south and shall sit down in the kingdom of God. You see, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob and all the prophets underline, all the ancient was very you shall see, here on earth, north, west, east, south people will come. Is it in heaven? It's on earth only. So they will all come in the earth only. They will only rule in a thousand years. Each and every department will be handled by these ancients. There won't be any corruption at all. So peaceable kingdom shall be thus established on earth. Okay. Now what is the last river? Genesis 2.14 it says river Euphrates. Now what does the river Euphrates represent? You see we have studied like and 44,000. Great Pujib we studied. Ancient Vadis we studied. So which is the one that is left over? The world of mankind. Hence, this represents uh, the world of mankind. You see, in Christ's kingdom, the whole world will be resurrected. Uh, as in Adam, all die. So in Christ, all should be made alive. You see, everybody will be part of the resurrection. Read with us. 1 Corinthians 15, chapter 21 and 22, brother. Corinthians 15, 21 and 22. Mm. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Very good. Uh, for by man came death, since uh, similarly man will come the resurrection of the dead. Uh, as in Adam all die, so in Christ all shall be made alive. You see, dear brethren, as soon as a man die, he never goes to hell or heaven. We have studied the subject of soul. Where he clearly says the soul is mortal. Soul dies. Soul is not immortal. You see. Therefore, dear brethren, hence there is a resurrection. If everybody would have gone here and then, why there is a resurrection? So when Christ comes, all the dead people will be brought back to life. They will come in the same condition as they died. As sinful condition only. But as they resurrected on this earth, Jesus will instruct them, give them the truth. They have to show development and walk up the highway of holiness. Come to perfection of Adam. You see. And uh, for this purpose only, Christ is given the thousand years to rule the brand. So once all the dead come back to life, how will the age be? The age will run backwards. Let us read Job 33, 25. Brother, huh? Job 33, 25. Brother. Job 23, 33, 25. Ah. His flesh shall be fresher than a child. He shall return to the days of his youth. Aha. His flesh shall be fresher than a child. He shall return to the days of his youth. He shall return. Turn back. Come back again to the days of his youth. Is it possible? Today, many people spend a lot of money to cover their hair, do makeup, all these things. And all. Why? To become young, to look young. What does the Bible say? He shall return to the days of his youth when in Christ's kingdom. And how his flesh shall be fresher than a child, it seems uh, so soft, so beautiful, each and every man can will be. So Christ, when he comes in the thousand years, the first thing he's going to do is bind Satan for a thousand years. Why? Truth has to be given to everybody. Now Satan is the god of this world, is blinded to everybody's eyes. Now if their eyes has to be opened, Satan has to be bound, no? This is the first thing Jesus is going to do. Revelation chapter 20 verses 1, 2 and 3. Brother. Revelation 21, 2 and 3. And I saw an, I saw an angel came, come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And his and he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years, and cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more, till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loosed 
lose a little season. Ah, you see, he's cast her into the bottomless pit so that he may deceive the nations no more. That means he is now allowed to deceive the nations. But in Christ's kingdom, he won't be allowed to deceive. Then what will happen? All the blind eyes will be opened. All the deaf ears shall be opened. This is not literal uh, deaf or blind. We have read these verses so many times. Dear brethren, those who have eyes but not able to see. Those who have ears who are not able to hear. The eyes of understanding, ears of understanding shall be opened. Everybody will understand the Bible and get converted to God. It is not only the conversion of mankind. It will be the conversion even of animals also. Read Isaiah 11 chapter 6 to 9. Isaiah 11, chapter 69. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb, and the lip down with the kid, and the calf and the young lion, and the fatling together. And a little child shall lead them, and the cow and the bear shall feed. The young ones shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. And the, suck, and the sucking child shall play on the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put his hand on the cockatrice then. Then uh, they shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Very good, brother. See, the wolf shall dwell with the lamb. How can the wolf be with lamb? It will dwell peacefully. Now, if a wolf sees the lamb, it will eat first of all. The Bible says it will stay together. Leopard shall lie with the kid, not kid, calf. You see? And lion shall eat straw. You see? This is in dreams. This is going to happen literally in Christ's kingdom. Dear brethren, when Jesus is going to rule on this earth, when his peaceable kingdom is going to be established, then what will happen? You see, even the animals will turn to be vegetarian, dear brethren. Remember the condition which was in Garden of Eden? The same condition will be returned back on this earth. Adam lived peacefully. None of the animals were wild. None of the animals were carnivorous. Similarly, in thousand years. Therefore, it says, none shall hurt nor harm in all my holy mountain because God's word shall be completely covered in the whole earth as the waters covers the sea. This is Christ's kingdom that is going to be established on earth. What did Jesus taught us to pray? Who can tell the Lord's prayer? Can somebody tell the Lord's prayer? What did the Jesus taught huh? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Very good, brother. You see, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. Thy kingdom come where? Here on earth. Let thy will be done where? On earth as it is done in heaven. Now God's kingdom is there. Now God's will is there on earth. No. Jesus said, let it be done. This is going to happen dear brother. And therefore, the four rivers out of it ran, represent the four salvations. Two heavenly, two earthly. Now see, uh, this is beautifully present today. Yeah, you know, if you see the world map, you see the two rivers what we read, Euphrates uh, and uh, Tigris. You see, Edical. This is there even today in uh, Iraq. But what about the two rivers, Pishon and Gihon? It is not there. What does this signify? Why God has made it such a way? Only two rivers are gone, but one river is there. Why? This means the heavenly salvation is invisible. That is not visible. But while the two, you see, rivers which are visible in our sight, earthly salvation is visible. Hence, dear brethren, heavenly salvation, earthly salvation. These two things are there, dear brethren. Therefore, you see, this is what the four rivers of Eden represent. You see, so... Anybody has got any doubts, any questions? Anybody? Any questions? Emmanuel, brother? No questions, brother. Vishnu, uh, brother? Any questions?
ओके गणेश प्रसाद नो क्वेश्चन ओके विष्णु प्रसाद यू हैव नो क्वेश्चन ओके स्टीफन ब्रदर साइज ब्रदर एनी क्वेश्चन जस्ट जॉइन आई एम सॉरी आई गो थ्रू दीडियो 